This painting will be similar to the last, except in this painting I'll show you how to paint water. I've taken the liberty of rubbing the white undercoat in here already. We'll do the sky quickly, darker in the corners. You can go to a lot of trouble if you want to and blend the sky all the way down, but I'll do it quickly. Darker in the corners and rub down there a little bit. I've already got the undercoat there. A bit of dark for the clouds. It doesn't matter what shape you throw this cloud on, you can work out your own shape. You may want to sign your name or just make a, a roundy, roundy motion. It doesn't matter. A little bit more dark in there. And white on the clouds again. I've already got the white in down there, so we're ready to go with the mountain. It's a pleasant shape. It's not a very good mountain. We'll get a good one sometime today. And the background trees again. There we are. We just cover up the bits we don't particularly like and keep this sweeping in shape all the time. Keeps the eye in. I forgot to brush that cloud over again, so you find if your sky doesn't look as you want it, once you brush it over with a flat brush, it tones it back and hides any faults. Again, I'll load the brush on one side and do the dab-dab brush stroke. The little mushroom shapes that form the foliage for the background trees. I would have liked that brown to go a bit darker there for the background trees, but it'll be all right now. Change the direction of the sunlight again to keep the painting looking interesting. We've got the sunlight on this side of these trees. And again, the dab dab brush stroke, keeping it facing in all the time. I wipe the brush each time before I reload it. You may not notice, but each time before I reload it, I wipe it, pulling it into a chisel shape. Pick the paint up always in one direction. You draw the paint towards you. You see there's no paint on the other side of my brush. There we are. Now for the water. We'll rub an undercoat in, similar to do with the sky. You could rub it in with a piece of rag or a brush, but rub it right into the pores of the canvas. It's important to keep this area white so that the water is from light to dark, from white to burnt umber, just a medium tone of burnt umber down the bottom here and blend it in. But it's much nicer to keep that white. It'll give you the shiny finish on the water. Now before we do our bank, we do the reflections. And we roughly paint the trees in the water, upside down. They don't have to be exactly a copy, just roughly in the water. And down here, a little bit of sunlight on the trees that are upside down in the water. You don't have to go to a lot of trouble, the reflections, to make them look exactly what's on the bank. The idea is make them similar to what's on the bank. If you find a reflection there and there's nothing on the bank, to correspond with the reflection. You can always put something in there to correspond with the reflection in the water. I'll show you later what I mean. Now, with the reflection, you put the big flat brush right on the bank and draw it straight towards you. Reflections come straight towards you, not like shadows go in different directions. Straight towards you. You do it in as least number of brush strokes as you can. Now that looks all right there. Now if we had something in the water like that, we'd have to put something on the bank to correspond with it. So we could put, say, a dark tree there. That's only if you have a mistake and you have something in the water. It's obviously not on the bank. You can put it back on the bank. Now with a painting knife, I'll do the bank. I'm going to load the painting knife with two colours and then I'll show you how to do it. Like that. 
to draw the knife along, again like spreading butter. Now what I did there, I loaded the painting knife with two colours. I'll put some down here, where you can see exactly how I do it. You pick up one colour and another colour, both on the same side of the knife, and then put them together and mix them with one or two strokes. Then pick them up again. And this will give you a variation of colour coming off your knife. So we'll do the bank again. I'll load the knife. I'll show you how the bank's done again. Put the knife on where you want the bank and just pull it along horizontally. It doesn't matter what comes off first, whether the light or the dark comes off first, as long as you've got a variation of colour there. After you put on the main part of the bank, this is all going to be changed into grass later, so as I say, it doesn't matter what shape it is, as long as it's in the right place. We'll pick up a little bit of burnt umber on the side of the knife and make a line under the bank. So we've got the, the grassy bit where we're going to put grass, then a line of burnt umber, and then under this line of burnt umber, we'll put a white line. That white line, it's most important that it's perfectly horizontal. This shows you the flatness of the water. If you have the line sloping downhill at all, it makes the water appear that it's sloping downhill. So we'll keep these white lines perfectly horizontal. There's not a need to put a lot on, but a crispy white line right on the bank, just under the bank, looks very nice. That's our water, our bank, and we have to do the grass and all the bits and pieces down here. I've picked up two colours on the brush on the one side there. I've picked up the burnt umber first and then the white on top. I always put a lot of paint on my brush. You need a lot of paint to do this type of painting. And we'll brush it in there. The white's coming off because it was on top of the brush. And as I turn the brush, it'll change colours. So we have the dark down the bottom and the light up there. Or you can put one colour on at a time. You can put the dark down the bottom with one brush straight. I'd like it a lot darker than that, actually. And you can put the white up the top. This is a handy brush stroke. You can use it in a crisscross fashion. This gives you a ground level effect. And as you come forward, your brush stroke becomes bigger. And this will give you a perspective where things in the distance are smaller and things that up near you are bigger. So that's our crisscross brush stroke. It's very handy for filling in big spaces. We're going to cover it all over with grass. Here's where you can fix your mistakes. Anything you don't like, turn it into grass. Up here, dab, dab, dab along there. Dab, dab, dab up in this area and come vibrant as you come forward. We'll finish off with a corner with the biggest strokes where the tallest grass is down here. I'm not happy with that, it's not dark enough. I'll put a big blob of dark paint and that certainly will make it dark for me. Now I have to put the branches on these little trees and a big tree up here. Load the painting knife, again with two colours. Burnt umber on one side, and the white on the other. Now where to put the tree? We'll put the tree down through here. It's not going to interfere with anything. I would like a branch out here, but I don't want to cross all this section here. It's not good to have too many things intersecting at the same place. So we'll keep the tree over here on this one. It may be different than the sample I showed you, and your painting may turn out different also. You may want to put the water over this side and maybe want to put your clouds over there. If your clouds are good over here, there's no sense in putting a big tree in to spoil them. But this one's turned out like this, and yours may turn out different. And here we go. Plaster it on. It's like butter. It's about the consistency of a, a butter that spreads well. Dark down the bottom. Clean the knife each time. That's very important. Each time you pick up paint, you must clean the knife, or you only get the colour on the knife not the colour of the paint you want. I've used this forky tree again. It's quite a good tree to practice with. It's a nice shape. Now your butt, just fill it in with dark colour. 
Keeping the knife strokes up and down the same shape as a tree. Now the little round brush, we finish all our branches off. Two colours at once. And some of the branches are all right and some aren't so good. That's enough branches for now. If you want to, you can go to a lot of trouble and have a lot of little branches. But I don't want to spend too long on this, so we'll just put the branches in the background here and a bit of foliage on that big tree and then we'll move on to the coloured picture. Little branch down here, falling off the tree. These branches are handy to put your arrangement right. If you wanted something to bring your eye into the picture, you can always have a branch that faces into the picture. Face everything into the picture if you have a choice of which way to face it. Face it in so your eye travels into the picture as it travels along each item. Now tidy up our grass around the bottom of the tree. a bit of foliage around the top of the tree. We'll put a bit of foliage around here. Again, we're using the dab dab brush stroke, painting umbrella shapes, all facing into the middle of the picture and crossing out the branches that we don't like. Well, that's not a bad picture. We shouldn't have any trouble with that. Don't fiddle, fiddle, fiddle with your picture. Put it on, put the paint on. If you don't like it, put it on again. But if you fiddle around one spot, you'll find you'll detail that to such an extent that you can't get the rest of it to look like the bit you've detailed. <laughs> 